That's rock and roll. <laughs> so, last time on Resident Evil 2, Claire escaped from Raccoon City, and now it's Leon's turn. Uh, I do have it set to quieten the game audio down whenever I speak or whenever the mic picks up anything. That's how you load scenario B. You have to load the uh, completed save file that you have from finishing the first scenario. A young girl named Sherry. However, behind their escape was the lone survivor of the Raccoon City Police Department, Leon S. Kennedy. I don't know what it is, but something about this screenshot of a sunset always felt really ominous to me. Your own lag's kicking in. What? The minute we start recording. The minute we start recording, the minute we start playing properly. Couldn't do it during second two. Yeah, basically, when you finish um, Scenario A with any character, you save the game, what have we got here? and you then put in the other disc and load the game, so you go straight to Scenario B. It's not like the remake where it will save that you have finished the game with one character. Because you have to remember, all these save slots came on memory cards, and every one of them took up a space on that... F what was it, 15 space? 15 slot memory card? Oh, Leon, you're looking like you're running at like 15 frames a second there. What was that? What are these things? You know, um, just thinking about it, the quality of the FMVs from RE2 to RE3 was astounding. Like, the FMVs in RE3 looked so much better than this. No! That's like a year difference. Like one year and that much improvement in the quality of FMVs. Wait! Don't shoot! I I don't actually have a an eight megabyte memory card for the PS2 anymore. I um, head to the police. God, years ago now, I went and got a sixty-four megabyte memory card. Which is really nice. Okay. Oh yeah, like uh, the FMVs. Um, FMVs on PS One are always cool to look at. But generally, one of the things I really like to consider is the improvement in quality of FMVs through a single series. And like RE2 to RE3, or Tek like relevantly Tekken to Tekken 2 to Tekken 3. Like Tekken 3 looks so good compared to Tekken 1. Hey, could you open the glove? Um, you could say Final Fantasy, but there's a gun inside. Better take it with you. I don't know. Final Fantasy 7 is a very different style to style to eight. And then eight, a pretty different style to nine. Oh, I didn't get a PS2 till like 2008. You okay? I had a GameCube first. Still in one piece. And uh, let's say I had a GameCube because Resident Evil 2 was on it. It's not true, but let's say it is. There's no Resident Evil 2 on the PS2. Backwards compatibility does not count. So the trick with the scenarios is whichever character's disc you put in first determines which side uh, they get out on. Because if you do Leon A, Claire B, the car does like a 180 degree turn and Leon gets out on the side with the gun shop.
And here we go. Should check the controls before we start, make sure we still got auto aim on. Yes, we do. Alright. Let's rock and roll. Look at those jagged edges. Ain't no smoothness turned on here. The playthrough is off to a wonderful start. Go and get every weapon. Except the flamethrower. When I would touch the flamethrower, it's worthless. Excuse me, gentlemen. I'm just gonna pick you up. See, now I'm thinking to myself, wait, do I actually remember how I do Scenario B? And I guess we'll find out. Uh, ask me again if I know how to do Scenario B in two hours. Ask me in two hours. So, I uh, get these bullets. What are you saying? That I can dodge bullets? No, Neo. When you're ready, you won't have to. No, Gleon does not get the spark shot. The place where the spark shot is, uh, in Claire, in Claire's run, uh, it's replaced with the custom shotgun parts. Because Leon, I think Leon does get less weapons. I'd have to think about it in my head. Um, but Leon gets the custom parts for all of his main weapons, which really compensates. Yeah, because like Claire gets the bow gun, the Claire has the handgun, the bow gun, the grenade launcher. No, it's the same number of weapons. Just Claire's has more versatility. Leon's had have more power. Uh, you'd have to ask me uh, to repeat what. You ever feel like God hates you? It's like, hmm... I don't like that guy down there. How can I make sure he dies in the worst way possible? I know, I'll let him get eaten by zombies and then have a helicopter crash on him. <coughs> oh, the spark shot. No, Leon doesn't get the spark shot. Uh, in its place for Leon is the custom shotgun parts. <coughs> And I think it's the only time a. Damn it, 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 get off! I think it's the only time a weapon is actually replaced. Um. Because every other time that Leon gets the custom parts, uh, Claire gets. Excuse me. Claire gets uh, grenade rounds instead. Uh, where the custom magnum parts are, she gets, I think, two. Um, two loads of explosive rounds, and where the custom handgun parts, we want that small key, where the custom handgun parts are, she gets. Um, I want to make sure we don't use that rocket launcher. Put this away for now. Where the custom handgun parts are, she gets flame rounds, I think it is. Yeah, those liquors will be there for pretty much the entire duration. And now we have to get past a bunch of zombies. Put the ladder down first. Custom shotgun's really nice, especially if you know how to use it, uh, which I will. So there's a bunch of zombies over here in the B scenario. Uh, all of them in this area are just clustered here, which is really weird. There's two there, and then there's like three here. Yep. Just waiting for me. Count your shots, people. Son of a bitch. 
bitch. Thank god this isn't a remake, because that many zombies would not have gone down to that few bullets. And now I can There we go. Some zombies will get back up if you leave them for a minute. Some zombies just won't. They'll wait for you to get close before they grab you. And that's always a pain when you can't actually see if they're, if they're dead or not. No, we don't. We don't mess with the knife in a uh, in RE2. Not in the original. It's just taking up precious inventory space. Ain't no knife runs here, people. Let's pick up this bad boy. Need to place that unicorn medal. Make sure I don't get too confused in my head with the A run. Yeah, I always check for the pool of blood, but in that situation, I couldn't actually see the zombies' uh, torsos where the blood usually is. So that was like the that was the big issue. No, the shotgun won't take two slots until RE0. It's like one of the big complaints after that game. Inventory space is at a premium and they throw so many items and weapons at you that take up two slots, it's stupid. Hey, Brad. <laughs> See you in RE3, Brad. I'll grab that special key again. And I think we want to head back upstairs. Yeah, you have two characters, but you also uh, get separated quite a lot. There's a f there's the hook shot, which is not pleasant, which you have to have with you more often than is really re is really uh, worth doing. And it's required at a bunch of points, which is not fun. Um. Billy Cat mix herbs, so you always have to throw those through Rebecca. And there's no uh, item chest in RE0. Oh no, there's more times you get separated than just the uh, the dumb waiter. So what do I want? I want to put you away for now and keep everything else. Now I want to go downstairs and grab that valve handle. Always walk through here, because otherwise the liquors are a problem. Except when you're right near the door. Uh, there's a dumbwaiter on the train in RE0, and... I think there is actually one equivalent in the training facility. No, actually, I'll leave that for later. We well, generally like the six item slots wouldn't be too bad if it wasn't for all the items that take up two slots, especially that hook shot. So uh, we're gonna kill everybody in here. Get behind that desk. It's good cover. Seriously. Sixteen. Still on fine after that many hits. Jeez.
It's crazy. Alright. Wanna watch out for that zombie clipping through the wall. That guy was still alive, actually. Yeah, thank, thank God for the auto aim. So, uh, still two, two, three, six. Want those shotgun shells? See, the map you get a lot earlier in uh, Scenario B. By the time you're probably going to be here in Scenario A, uh, you should be mostly done with the police station. Grab this valve handle. And that should be it for this room, actually. Yeah, we don't need anything else. See, I'm second guessing myself now after the mistakes I made in Scenario A. Just need to go with the flow and not think about it too much. See, that should be enough. I'd say Clary is easier than Claire B, but uh, Leon B, I don't think is that much harder than Leon A. And I think it's mostly because Leon can deal with Mr. X pretty well. I don't think Claire is really able to do that much. Alright, so uh, we do do this. Use the valve again. We actually use it way earlier in this scenario. Good, and I forget, is the handgun bullets for Leon in the helicopter? Shotgun shells, that's even better. Awesome. I'm just going to equip the shotgun for no reason, don't worry too much. Don't think about it. Oh, this is different. So, uh, fun fact, those other five capsules, um, you see where they went in RE3. Oh, well, yeah. It's a good thing we got everything out of there. Have you heard the good word about our Lord and Saviour, Mr. Wesker? Albert Whiskers? Okay, let me just back myself into a corner here. Probably gonna take a hit. Uh, I'm gonna use the two herbs there. That overhead slam is nasty. It's nasty business, that overhead one. Hey, Bane, how you doing? Grab these shotgun... No, it's handgun bullets at this point. It's not shotgun yet. Darn. Yeah, every... Uh, all of those capsules on the helicopter are actually uh, the T-103... The T-103 Tyrants. Um, they appear in the Dead Factory in RE3. And now, fun fact, it's going to be a while before we actually see him again. Yep, 
You know, it's going to be worth killing these liquors, actually. I'm going to be through here a bunch, and I don't want to sneak past every time. Okay, come on. Damn it. No, 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 no. You dead? I got really worried when I heard that shriek. Because that shriek usually means they're about to do their, um... Leaping attack, and if that hits you, that is major damage. That can end up run. Ooh, that would have been nasty. But I think it's definitely worth us taking those guys out right now. And we get the car key here. Am I injured? No, I'm not. Way Leon was holding himself in that cutscene. Don't take three. Oh, don't you take three shotgun shells. Claire really does have an easier time with a grenade launcher. Does so much better. So now we can go downstairs and open the doors. And also put away the valve handle for the next hour or so. Hour if I do this wrong right. A uh, shotgun can go away as well. Um, valve handle. Yeah, we're all good. Now we can go and open up the doors downstairs. The small key replaces the lockpick. Claire gets the lockpick, Leon gets the lighter. Um, so basically anything Claire can open with the lockpick, Leon needs the small keys for. Really, there's only two places you really want to use the small keys. Um, we're going to be doing both of them. Uh, what, is, what you want to do in scenario B is, you see the library just open there, and um, we can get in that now. Uh, you want to avoid going in there until you are almost done with the police station in scenario B. Okay, and put this guy down. That guy just didn't want to stop, did he? I think that's our first real bullet sponge zombie. Is there anything I want in here? I don't think there is. File. Chest. No, I think we're good. Alright, let's get going. You know, I forget if there's actually a liquor area in scenario B. Doesn't sound like there is, doesn't look like there is. Yes. So we're not actually going to go in there. All that's in there for Leon is a file he ca that has no relevance for him and the first aid spray. And we are not going to be using first aid sprays. Want to get through here quickly. Avoid these guys. I think now uh, we should be on like the proper path for this. Um, I think the rest of the path from Leon through the police station is pretty much the same as the scenario A. Eh? 
And of course, Leon can grab the jewel on his first run through. He doesn't have to come back with the lighter. Alright, so we'll come up to the um, the safe room in a minute and we will get uh, the special key back out. No, damn it, I wanted that one. You don't need to take these guys out, just um, get past them. Because now we'll never need to be in this corridor again. It's always weird to see this corridor empty uh, when you know you've not cleared it out yourself. So let's get that special key back out. Put some of these herbs away. Put this away. We don't need that yet. And the special key, and also that small key. So we are actually going to get use out of it. So we have a choice of the left or the right. What do you think, chat? Left or right? Chat has unanimously spoken. Everybody enjoy the little show off there, and we're off. Uh, fun fact, both the costumes change Leon's stance with his handgun. Uh, he holds it sideways and does actually fire it slightly faster, which you can make some good use out of. If you... Um, if you know how to really maximize that. It's not going to mean too much for us, though, because we will get the custom handgun very shortly, which... Um... There we go. Um... You then don't... It's like you hold it sideways here. With the custom handgun, you hold it normally again. Uh, it's been a while since I've gone through Leon A, but uh, depending on where you find the first... Um, depending where you find the first small key, you might get more use out of it in Leon A before you get the custom handgun, but we're going to get the custom handgun very shortly. Yeah, I did notice that in the remake, that uh, with the gun he gets in the second scenario, he does do the sideways thing again. Which was a neat callback. I did quite like that. Let's grab this jewel. Uh, head through here. Hmm. Excuse me, gents. Want to just pop into the office for a moment? Uh, in the 64 version, actually, Leon does get a... Um, Leon and Claire both get different uh, alternate costumes. Like, Leon gets a Stars costume, which is really interesting. Uh, I think Claire gets a Cowgirl outfit. Also, check the uh, jacket in the background there. as a Resident Evil 1 reference. I don't think there's anything else I want in here. Okay, and much faster. Oh, there you are. Oh, 
always count your shots. It was a really big thing at the time that Capcom was able to get up to seven zombies, I think it was, on screen at once. Oh, hey there, little girl. Hey, wait! And Sherry drops the diamond key, which we want. And also grab the handgun ammo. I mean the shotgun ammo. Um, yeah, after we've got space, because we're going to use that small key. Leon! And Claire's in her alternate as well. Claire, you made it! Yeah. Have you seen a little girl around here? Yeah, oh, we just got a radio on our model out of nowhere. I don't know. But it's too dangerous for her to stay here alone. Leon, I'll go look for her. You go and find us a way out of here. Of course. But before I forget, here's a radio. Uh, you want to talk about cartoons? Fun fact, Alison Court, the voice actress for Claire in this game, voiced Jubilee in the 90s X-Men cartoon. So we want to use the small key here. And we get these custom handgun parts. Yeah. Okay, so now we're not going to reload uh, the handgun next time we run out of ammo. Yeah, if you think that's crazy, uh, the voice actress for Jill Valentine in RE3 voiced Jean Grey in the X-Men cartoon in the 90s. I forget her name, though. So we're not actually going to go through the library until we're almost ready to leave. Uh, there is a reason for that. I will share that reason with you when we go through the library when we're about ready to leave. But the library's going to be like the last room we check out in the police station. To be fair, um, I said, I've said this before in uh, various other regards. A lot of the time, bad voice acting is usually down to bad direction. I want to put the magnum away. Uh, we'll pop it next to the shot here. In fact, actually, let me get the shotgun out and uh, and that's. All good. Awesome, let's go and do stuff. Who, who did Regina, the uh, voice actress for Jill Valentine? Because I'll be honest with you, I have not played Dino Crisis anywhere near as much as I probably should. And when I do play Dino Crisis, it's Dino Crisis 2 and I'm not listening to what's being said. Should be ammo in one of these. There we go. Well, like I say, um, it's usually, it's usually down to direction more than anything. Um, what was this? Ninety eight. The X Men cartoon had been around for a while by then. I think it had actually ended by then. And um, Alison Court was actually uh, an experienced act actress in Canada uh, before that. All right, that's 18 shots. And we combine it with the custom handgun parts, we get 18 more shots for free. And then we get a burst option. Which, depending on how much you hold down the X button when you fire, uh, you can actually control it pretty well yourself without switching it to manual or from auto. 
Oh no, I don't think Alison Court was inexperienced at this time. So like I say, she'd been in um, a bunch of stuff by this point already. Yeah, you know, I had, I'd never realised that Regina had the same voice actress as Jill. I mean, part of that might be the completely different tone she takes. But also that I've not paid much attention to Dino Crisis since, um... Yeah, we'll get that, actually. And unlock this door. Yeah, I've not played much attention to Dino Crisis in years, and when I play it, I'm playing two, and I'm usually playing that with headphones on or something. Just drop some stuff off at the box here. Um, for Japanese games, though, around this time, it was not uncommon for the voice acting, the voice direction, uh, to be done by a Japanese director who couldn't actually speak English and really just had to go by the way they felt it sounded. Which was a practice that lasted way longer than it should have, even up to the first Dissidia game on the PSP. Which is a big part of the reason why uh, Kuja in the first city game, his voice acting got a lot of criticism. And it's not because the voice actor's bad, it's how he was directed to do it by the Japanese voice director. Which is a big shame. His voice, like, they got the same actor back for Duodecim, the prequel, and his acting is much better there. So uh, now we want to head down to the basement. Hmm. Now I'll pick you up on the way back, actually. So I should be going. Th I'll only be going through here like one more time, probably. Yeah, I've never watched the Beetlejuice cartoon. I'm aware it existed, uh, but I've never actually watched it. Was Lydia the character that Winona Ryder played in the movie? Yeah, we can grab these actually. Yeah, all right. The dogs are stupid bullet sponges. There's only one dog, I thought there were two. Hmm. Uh, interestingly enough, Alison Court was also... Yeah, I think this card is empty. Alison Court was also a, a staff member in some, rig in some way at Capcom during the uh, late 90s. Uh, she did some localization work on at least one Mega Man X game, and I think was involved in a bunch of the Resident Evil stuff, which is, I think, probably the main reason why she um, was brought back to Resident Evil as many times as she was. Because I think up to that point, like, the only other person who came back from th this era uh, to revoice a character was Sally K Cahill. Cahill? Uh, who voiced Ada in this game, she comes back in RE4 to voice the character again. Uh, I think they dropped her after Umbrella Chronicles or Dark Side Chronicles. Uh, but Alison Court was certainly involved in some way in uh, Capcom. 
Um, if you are a Mega Man X fan, uh, the reason why the Mavericks in Mega Man X5 are named after Guns N' Roses members is because Alison Court's, I think, husband at the time was a big fan of Guns N' Roses, so she did it for him. Speaking of Ada... When I saw the big skull on your back, I thought you were a complete tool. Who are you? Ada Wong. And what are you doing here? I'm looking for some guy named Ben. He's one of those reporter types, always looking for a scoop. I would also be in a zombie but zombie apocalypse looking for some guy. I've been trying to find another way inside. If we work together, we can move this thing. Give me a hand here, will you? <laughs> to be fair, it's, it's longer than two hours on your first playthrough. And it comes across more in the remake. Um, that she's manipulating him. Although, made a mistake, she's probably more trustworthy in the remake than in this one. Well, that was one of the weirdest things about uh, Resident Evil Damnation, the second CG movie. It implied they'd actually slept together at some point, which really felt kind of weird. That was like, really? The doesn't that kind of end the will they won't they part of this whole ridiculous thing they've got going? Let me guess. You must be Ben, right? Get up! Now! Degeneration is a bad movie. I don't think the it's the force for it in the later Resident yeah. Evils. It's more that he it's likes her that you knew um, probably as a person you know, and knows that regardless of whatever, whatever her agenda is, she will yeah, always back you. him when he needs I'm her to. to find my boyfriend. His the problem is they never should have brought Ada back. Of umbrella based in Chicago, but he suddenly disappeared six months ago. Or like certainly never place. should have brought her back after RE4 at least. Because at that point, it's very clear they have no idea what's going on with Ada. Why would I want to tell you? Okay, I say we leave him in there. Does anyone know where they put the key to this cell? I have it right here, officer. But I'm not about to leave this cell. Those zombies aren't the only things crawling around out there. Well, no, there's also the, uh, the liquors. And Mr. X. What was that? Like I said, I'm not leaving this cell. I ain't going nowhere. Get out of here before you lead it right to me. Hey, well, that's the I'm problem. Not There's nothing wrong with being mysterious the if the mystery is eventually the explained. What? And Capcom never well, actually explained it. So you get to the point in Degeneration RE6. Where she's just mysterious for the right. sake of being Do mysterious. You know how to get out of the city? There's a kennel in the back of the building. Inside Ari 4 at least man. has the whole the thing. Lead you to the um, entrance, in separate yeah. ways at least. That All right, Ada is kind of undermining Wesker for her own ends, and that's about as much as is really needed. <laughs> Yeah, I was really disappointed that Ben dies so fast in the remake as well. That death scene, though. Okay, so I just need to use the manhole opener here. And get it out of our inventory. 
Hey, Rocky. Hey, Jojo. Get the red herb. Combine it. Suspenseful herb combining music. Like you want to talk bullet sponges, the dogs will take way more than is entirely necessary. I think I think the uh, Ben's death scene did actually look really good. Like just the whole skull crushing thing, it was simple but really brutal. I really liked it. Just blue herbs. Yeah, it was simple, but I really liked it. Uh, don't stop moving and you should be fine. Watch out for that guy. Don't stop moving to the funky, funky beat. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we have enough space. We can just uh, dip in here for a moment. And then go right back out. Because I haven't actually got any of the chess pieces yet. Oh, hey, Ada. Ada? So, uh, let me see. Thinking about the location of the chess pieces, we can have one now already. Um. It's a dead end. Clock tower. You think library. We can have the one in the library if we go in there earlier. Boost. I'll go and check. And then the last one's in the interrogation room. You see, yeah, we can have two. We could have two now, but we don't actually have any. So this is actually better than Sherry's playable section because we can actually defend ourselves. That said, if you do Claire, if you do Leon A. Claire B. Uh, Ada has to deal with the dogs in this area. Sherry has to deal with zombies, which is much easier. How cute! That little girl must have dropped this. Because the zombies actually can't her. properly attack Sherry. The only thing they can do to her is vomit on her, and the vomit is like one of the weakest attacks in the game. Uh, and Sherry has more health than any other character. How many shots do we have? Uh, 45. Right. And Ada actually gets the same handgun that Claire gets. You know, I'm probably going to forget you if I don't kill you, so... And also, it's not like I need to hold on to this ammo. So, uh, while we do this puzzle again, uh, how's everybody doing tonight? Uh, Leon, uh, Leon never actually comes through this area, and neither does Claire. This is a Sherry and Ada exclusive. Doesn't everybody love these old block pushing puzzles? This is one of the big reasons why Tomb Raider died. In its original incarnation. Like my god, the number of blocks you have to push in every one of those games. 
That's not true at all, Tomb. The classic Tomb Raider series died because of Angel of Darkness and the many problems that had. And we get the club key. And let's go and get the optional shotgun shells as well because we want those shotty shells. There we go, shotgun shells. Yay! Nothing else around here. And off we go. Da 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 and we're here. <laughs> Computer messing up. Oh, let me see. No. Leon, can you hear me? That's nasty. Hey, That's uh, nasty to hear, Estasa. Did you find anything? Right here. Think fast. Here's one more. Yeah, I imagine a case of shotgun shells is probably kind of heavy. It sounded fairly heavy. I can't reach Saying you think you. fast before you I'm throw it feels like a bad idea. Later. What? Ada, wait! Uh, there will not be an Ada wait counter in this video. Got it. So uh, we have our next destination. And I think, th yeah, the, that's actually where the crank is in Leon B. So we do want to get up there uh, before we get out of this place. Um, but now we're kind of in like this, the last run round the police station. So drop some of these off. Um, shotgun shells. I do want the shotgun. No, I don't want the shotgun actually. That said, I could do with some more handgun ammo. Hmm. Hmm. And watch out for the spiders. And for the love of God, do not get poisoned in this game. Not because it's a pain to deal with, but because it's so easy to avoid. Uh, safety saves on Leon B. Um, it depends just how the run's going. Again, uh, if we're doing one safety save, it'll be around the lab area. Um, but like I say, the big problem with Claire A is the final boss. It is possible that um, we can get through this without a safety save, but just because we are streaming and something may go wrong, I should have brought the fucking shotgun. Because there are liquors that I'm going to want to take out. Okay, and now just get around these guys because I'll never be coming through this room again. Aha! I'm probably going to do a safety save near the lab, actually. Uh, just to be safe. Up until that point, the only real threat is uh, Mr. X. 
and not so much Mr. X. But yeah, I should have brought the shotgun because if I'm going to get the side pack, I need to go in there. And there are liquors in there in scenario B. So I'm going to make a quick detour to the closest, the closest safe room. And in the process, we're also going to pick up this red herb. Um, but if you know what you're doing in RE2, Mr. X is never a viable threat after the first meeting. And the first meeting is only really worrisome because you don't have much to deal with him. Okay, so we put this away and get a green out. Get this. Combine. I don't feel like we need the extra ammo, but... I don't feel, feel like we need the extra ammo, but uh, there was that liquor that decided to take three shots before. And there's two liquors to deal with here. So it'd just be safe. And yeah, you're totally right, Bane. The uh, the lick, the Mr. X's in Survivor are pathetic. But even... Get out of the way! God damn it. Uh, but even more than that, uh, the Mr. X's, um... This is a bad idea. Even more than that, the Mr. X's in Survivor are so avoidable for the most part. Check the health. Now we use the herb. Three shotgun shells. Yeah, but like in particular, there's like the, the one long uh, tunnel section where there's like three or four Mr. X's there, and you can just run past every single one of them. Yeah, it was probably like one of the biggest changes with the remake that Mr. X was credible as a threat. Get the side pack, I won't have to worry about carrying items so much anymore. What's this? Ooh, tasty. And also, plenty of handgun ammo. Come on, give me some more, give me some more. There we go. And we want that side pack. Yes, I will. I, I should do Survivor at some point, because that game needs to be seen. And it's weird, because it has some really interesting features, like the multiple different endings based on where you go near the start of the game. Um... And it's like the worst voice act in the entire series, which is awesome. Really is. I always want more shots. And Magnum rounds. And I am going to want to drop off to a save room actually to drop those Magnum rounds off. And probably the shotgun actually.
Nemesis is probably most terrifying because of his unpredictability. And yeah, that one in Outbreak in the lab with the hunters. No, I know what you mean. That is... Yes. Once that guy goes rogue, that is a nasty place to be. I can promise you, Istasa, um... Damn it, I did that so bad. Didn't want that. And I can promise you, you will not be scared of Survivor. Come on. Yeah, but that is why you do not aim the shotgun uh, at zombies who are not close enough to blow the heads off. Because like, when they break in half, like, that's just irritating. This run has actually gone pretty bad for damage so far, actually. I think I said actually twice there. Let's go drop some of this stuff off. Let's get around this wall. Well, like I say, um, if you know what you're doing in RE2, RE2 is, like, I would say the most consistent game to speedrun. Or, you know, not even, not speedrun, uh, to just play. If you know what you're doing, RE2 is actually really simple, uh, and you never really need to be worried. RE3, with its random, uh, randomization of certain things, and Nemesis can just screw you in, a, in some places. Uh, if you get unlucky with that. Zari 3 is certainly the most dangerous of the Resident Evils. And then RE1 is the most survival horror of them all. Like I say, if you know what you're doing with RE2, you never have to be afraid of anything. Except when a liquor shrieks. Be afraid of that. Uh, you can randomize RE2 if you want to, um, but my recommendation for that would be more... You want? Know let me grab this. You know what, I won't. I'll grab that herb in a minute. My recommendation would be more check out the N64 version with its actual built-in built randomizer. Grab this. Uh, RE1, um, the big difference between RE1 and most of the rest of the series, up until, like, Remake, is RE1 was heavy on the conservation idea. Um, so I'm pretty sure I said this during the Claire A run. Yeah, we're good. Uh, during the Claire A run, but uh, you can kill everything in this game and have plenty of ammo left over. RE1, that's not a thing. You need to be conserving your ammo. Remember, 23 is always number one. Except in Master Quest. Oh no! I sure hope this guy doesn't run around here and beat me up while I'm grabbing this cog. I'm sure hope I sure hope this guy doesn't stop me from just leaving this room. Well we got away from him. It's all good. I love that they actually have the hole there. Oh no, he's back. Uh, that'll actually happen regardless of whether or not you 
um, kill him in there or not. Get out of the way here. And let's back up into a corner. There we go. And what do you have for us this time? You have shotgun shells. Yay! See you later, Mr. X. One thing we can most definitely say about this is X is not going to give it to me. And now we want to stop by the chief's office and grab some stuff through the secretary's office on the way. And drop off this chest plug. But yeah, um, once you get the custom handgun, uh, certainly for there at least, um, it's what I recommend. Excuse me. Excuse me. It's what I recommend for dealing with Mr. X because you've got the room and the custom handgun will fire fast enough that you can have him down before he gets near you. Put this away for a moment. Put you away up here where I will notice you. Grab you. Nothing else I need. And on the way back, I actually want to cut through the downstairs so I can grab those three herbs I left behind. That knife ain't leaving. That knife is not leaving the chest. Like I say, um, one of my favourite things about Resident Evil DS is with the knife being um, the knife being on the shoulder button, uh, on L for the DS, right, and it's not actually part of the inventory, you actually get a good amount of utility out of it. No, I call myself not a fool. Don't get me wrong, we get to we get to code Veronica, you'll see some nice stuff. But uh, not not here. So you say um call myself a mank, it's actually don't call myself a yob. Excuse me. Yeah, the knife in Sneak of Veronica is, uh, like, the only time it's worth using before 4. And drop off the two jewels. Fun fact, if you check the description, if you check these in the inventory, uh, the name changes from Red Jewel to Virgin Heart. Which, thinking about it, might be uh, a hint of where to place them. Like the two maidens, the two stone maidens might be uh, supposed to be virgins, I don't know. I don't judge. Uh, no, you wouldn't want to try and cheese the whole game uh, with a knife in Code Veronica. Um, like there's some bosses you just wouldn't want to bother with, like Nosferatu. Going up to Nosferatu with a knife would be a bad idea. Um, Alexia with a knife would be a bad idea. The Tyrant with a knife would be a bad idea. 
It's more just for your standard zombies. Because uh, you take down as many zombies as you can with a knife and you are saving yourself so much tra so much ammo with that. Which you can then use for everything else. Well if you did if you did the practice, possibly. Uh, you could make your way through the entire game. You know somebody's gone and done that. I mean, there's a reason we know it takes like 167 knife stabs to take down Nemesis. Because someone did it. Need to uh, stop off at a save room again to grab the gold cog. Don't want to forget anything this time. So we're doing about an hour or so in. We're not making bad time. Drop off all these herbs. Drop this chest piece off. And grab that G cog. And I don't need anything else. We're all good. Let's go finish the police station. The craziest thing about the whole Guitar Hero thing... Um, with the Guitar Hero controller... On Dark Souls is that if you ever actually take a look at what you can do with a dark with a guitar controller on Dark Souls, like you can only move left or something, you can only turn one way. Um, like the actual limitation of the controls is the craziest thing. I could barely do the original Castlevania with a friggin' controller. Never mind the power. Hmm. It's weird, the video cut out for a minute. Uh, just bear with me a moment, guys. I'm going to check the video and I'll be right back. And we're going to get right back to it. Yeah, um, basically what you missed was the zombies broke through downstairs, which is exactly why we saved the library for the end. Because whenever you enter the library in Scenario B, the zombies will break through downstairs. Like, if you place the cord in Scenario A, uh, the cord shorts out and the zombies break through. So if you leave it until you're done with the police station, um, we don't have to go back down there. Uh, so that's that's good. It's the smart thing to do. Uh, leave makes you uh, you have to do a bit of running around uh, around the start of the police station, but it makes everything so much more convenient if you just do that. No, I've not lost uh, any of the game. Uh, what it was, was um, when the zombies, when the cutscene played that the zombies broke through, I uh, lost the video feed for a moment. Uh, it came back on my screen, but didn't come back on the capture preview. So, what I did was I reset the capture for, uh, for the stream so that you guys wouldn't lose anything and paused it while I did that. Just make sure I actually did get everything. Completely lost my train of thought when that happened. And now we'll never need the crank again. And we just place the gold cock here. Press the switch. Yeah, so like I say, sorry about that, guys. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. Um, we're taking steps in future to avoid that, but for now we seem to be okay. Uh, hopefully it won't happen again during this run. Uh, with Leon, we can jump down here, and this will take us right back down to the, um, the cellar just outside the cells. Oh no! Ben! 
not Ben. He was my favourite character. Yeah. So, um, so what I did was I paused by going into the options screen um, by pressing select. I'm hoping that that doesn't actually keep the game timer going. Uh, but just in case, what we're going to say is knock maybe three minutes off ben. the final end time. Can you still hear me? Come on, but we should still get a good time with this. Damn! I don't believe this! Yeah, Birkin kills Ben in uh, the, the original game. <laughs> Bitter irony. If you're doing Leon A, Birkin actually implants Ben with the embryo rather than Chief Irons. And in that case, Chief Irons' death is probably more gruesome. That's in Claire B. Make him pay. Claire Birkin. Hang in there, Ben. He's dead, Liam. Oh, hey, Ada. Where were you when Ben died? Where are you going, Ada? I love the delivery of the line more than the line itself. I have a feeling that's where I'll find John. Like, get that scum. Ada! Make wait. him hey. pay. Are you of course, Leon never actually meets Chief Irons, so it doesn't matter. It'll be all right. Trust me. We found a way to the sewer. Follow us later. Claire, Claire, wait, wait! Man, why doesn't anyone ever listen to me? Okay, at this point, we'll grab this one herb here. If I can ever make it in the cell, grab this one. Because we got the room. God damn it. So, uh, fun fact. Uh, as if... Well, I say if. Um, when we continue to play more Resident Evils, expect me running into more walls. I don't think that was actually too bad in Claire A. I don't think I ran into that many walls, but... Really paying for that here. And one last look at the spiders. Excuse me. Thank you. And uh, let's just pop into the safe room. Just gonna get some stuff. And uh, drop this off. Grab the other two chess pieces. Um, grab the magnum. Equip the magnum. Uh, not for any real reason. Don't worry about it. Don't don't think about it too much. And let's go get out of the police station. So this, like I said, this always confused me, because Birkin here looks way less mutated than every time we've seen him chronologically prior to this. So this boss fight isn't too difficult if you know what you're doing. Um, but be careful, because if he hits you with that pipe, that is a lot of damage. So that's six shots, and we are done. See you later, Ben. And let's put all the chess pieces in. Yep, 
it's not just when it kills Ben. Um, if you think back to the cutscene where Annette explains that Birkin is the monster, um, which takes place at least several days before this, he has the eye then as well. What was that all about? Running off like that was reckless and stupid. Did I say? Did I say Those something else? Those are everywhere. Not to mention that thing that got Ben. I, I was there, Leon. I know. Look, Ada. As an officer. Yeah, the cutscene where Annette tells Claire that the monster is broken. Get through this alive if we don't work together. Okay. All right. We'll do this your way, for now. Alright, let's go. Into the sewers. Which thankfully are not as long or tedious or painful as the remake. Like seriously, the sewers in the remake go... Did I say it, Ben? Hmm. All right, so um, push this out of the way. And this is what we actually, um, this is what we actually want to check out. Some good stuff down here. Grab this. More Magnum ammo. Uh, light this up. Take one step forward and light. Ah, oh, for the love of God, come on. Now light it up and grab the shotgun shells here. Yeah, there only being uh, the 1G monster in the original is definitely something I really appreciate at this point. Uh, but even beyond that, the sewers are not as labyrinthine uh, as in the remake. Um, they don't take as long. Grab that valve handle. Grab the valve handle. Uh, and that's it for now. Is it? No, I want the small key. I did pick up another small key, didn't I? Yeah, I want the small key. Alright, let's go. Uh, equip the handgun and let's go. I don't think any of the puzzles in the remake were... Uh, particularly difficult. There was that one, uh, the chest one, in the sewers that did actually require a bit of thought. That was like probably the most thought you ever required to do in a Resident Leon. Evil game, though. That woman was. I have to talk to her. Well, see you, Liam. Let me go, Liam. Back here in it. Yeah, I wouldn't say the puzzles in this game are really even puzzles. Uh, most of them do straight up tell you the answer. There's the bookcase puzzle that, uh, if you look, it will tell you the answer pretty much outright. Is there anything else that would actually be classed as a puzzle, or is it all just get keys? Like specific shaped keys for specific shaped blocks. 
801. And by that I'm thinking like stuff like the two red jewels are basically keys to open the chest lock. Now I remember. Uh, the four One chest the plugs to open the lock to the sewers, that kind of thing. Name as his password. Ada and Fun fact, this is actually a reference to RE1. Um, there is a computer in the first game where you have to type in both a username and the password, and the username is John, the password is Ada. William Birkin. What? John's dead. He became one of those zombies. My condolences. And although I regret this, you will be joining him shortly. I won't let anyone take the G-Virus away from me. G-Virus? G-Virus? It's capable of creating the ultimate bioweapon. Its potential is even greater than that of the T-Virus. Then that must mean um, the, the painting, burning the painting with the lighter, um, I think I is hinted at in the secretary's diary. And it's all Umbrella's fault. None of that's this about it. If they hadn't tried to steal his research away from him. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you could kind of consider that. Yeah. Where did you get that pendant? It looks exactly like the one I gave Sherry. She dropped it. I've been holding on to it for her. Liar! Give it back to me! Smack her! Smack her! I love this line right here. Too bad. To be fair, your first time through at least, you should be reading all of the diary, all of the uh, files. <laughs> yep, let's go down the ladder. Yeah, you are right uh, with RE3. RE3 does have more puzzles, like the water puzzle, which... Uh, Yeah, you're right. There are, there are more puzzles in RE3, like actual puzzles. Well, you say a lot of people don't play games to read, but back in my day, reading was the only thing you could do in games. Back in my day? We didn't have any of this fancy voice acting. Everybody's words were written down. We had to make the voices up in our heads. So yeah, let's grab this. That's more precious magnum bullets. Not where I want the camera to switch. Is there even anything else down here? Ah, there we go, more shotgun shells. I knew there was something. Just looking in the wrong place. Well, see you, zombie. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I mean... Like I say, uh... Three herbs. Uh, your typical RPG fan back in the day really had to either read or learn to read. Like, it's probably uh, where I got my big interest in reading from, actually. Stuff like Final Fantasy uh, and the early Pokemon games back when I was playing Pokemon. Just because you had to read them to actually know what was going on. Play any FF before 10, but don't play 2. Don't play 2. Also, if you're playing 3 before 10, then uh, you're not reading it because it's in Japanese.
Okay, so we head down here. Ignore the spiders. Ignore Jerry the friendly spider. I will say, like, learning to read off Final Fantasy VII isn't, like, the best way you could learn to read. Because the translation in VII is so poor. I mean, like, seriously. Final Fantasy VI has a better translation than VII does. Attack while the tail's up. Let's grab some of this. Fun fact, if you play um, the PS4 port of Final Fantasy VII, they actually did fix the This Guy R sick line. It's like one of the only translation things they fixed. That said, like, pretty much everything else is still in place. The, dub the W item glitch still works on the PS4 version. It's what I recommend to get that trophy for getting, what is it, like 99,999,999 gil. And of course, the easiest way to get to level 99, throwing elixirs at the magic pots. So, use W item glitch to... Um, Duplicate your elixirs, throw those at the magic pots, repeat until you hit level 99 and get that trophy. I feel like the spiders, um, you speak about the spiders, I feel like the spiders, more than anything, aren't intended to uh, fit with the region at all or anything. Because the, the appearance of the spiders changes per game. Like the Black Tiger in RE1 looks very different to the spiders in this game. The sooner the better. I think it was more about what the development team thought looked cool, probably. Um, that said, uh, the spiders in Code Veronica are just less interesting visually. <laughs> Ada's getting stuck on walls again. Oh, no, there I go. Fun fact, like many bosses in Code Veronica, you can just completely ignore that giant spider boss that Alexia sets on you. Let's go get that other medal. Leon doesn't get any flame rounds here. Sorry, I was looking a bit to the left. And we don't actually need that small key for anything. So I don't think we're ever actually going to use it. What they should have done is, uh, Mutant Spider-Man's. Like a uh, Spider-Man's infected with a uh, T-Virus. <laughs> it 
in I feel like with this uh, with this series it doesn't really matter how big the spider species can get because T-Virus makes everything bigger. You need something to be a big and dangerous enemy, but it doesn't really make sense. That's okay, we'll just say T-Virus. And also, they'll poison you because T-Virus. Uh, fun fact, if you haven't checked out the uh, recent Spider-Geddon arc in Spider-Man comics, uh, which is the second big Spider-Man crossover arc, where you end up with Spider-Man characters from various different universes and continuities, uh, they introduced some really fun alternate Spider-Man characters, such as Spider's Man, who is essentially a colony of sentient spiders in a Spider-Man suit, pretending that they are a person and that they don't want to eat everybody. So this is weird, because this only happens with Leon. This doesn't actually happen with Claire. This isn't a scenario B thing. I should have brought the shotgun. Not for this, for the zombies coming up. There we go. The Amazing Bagman is actually just regular Peter Parker in a Fantastic Four costume with a bag over his head. Um, what else have you got? Um, if you've ever seen the Japanese Spider-Man series, uh, where the only connection it had to Spider-Man was the, the main character in his super episode was called Spider-Man and wore the Spider-Man outfit. Uh, if you've ever seen that, that character actually appears in the Spider-Geddon arc with his giant robot Lepardo, Le, uh, Lepardomon. I, I don't remember. Leopardon, there you go. Leopardon. Uh, he's called Spider-Man. He's really fun. Sixteen shots, we need to get through this area. Grab those custom shotgun parts. Ten shots. I think one shot now, actually. Yep, one shot. I would definitely get to um, some Spider-Man games. I do love Deal with the Mater. Ada. 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 I shouldn't have forgotten the shotgun. Also that guy, Ada. Quick bucket. Exactly as I planned. Yeah, we get we get some more Spider-Man games because I do love the Spider-Man games. Um, Spider-Man Shadow Dimensions is good for a bunch of the alternates. We finally arrived. So you play as Amazing Ultimate Noir and 2099. But as a little bonus thing, right at the end, uh, in the post-credits, uh, Spider-Ham turns up. Who is basically Spider-Man but a pig. Which is really fun. Uh, and Spider-Ham's secret identity is Peter Parker. Alright, so let's uh, clear up our items. And the good news is we are actually going to be ditching the handgun anyway. Because at this point we can actually 
uh, make the shotgun our main weapon. Drop this off. And this. And the magnum rounds. And get the magnum out and get the magnum rounds again. I feel like I should have more shotgun shells. There we go. I knew I was missing some. Yeah, Spider-Man, uh, the Spider-Man crossover stuff has gotten really ludicrous, but really fun. And if you're not having fun with your superhero, I feel like you're doing something wrong. Because, like, you know, you can... Being dark and gritty like Batman is all well and good, but remember, uh, Batman isn't appealing because he's dark and gritty. Making other characters dark and gritty to be a popular like Batman is, isn't going to work. Play to their strengths. Let me just grab this key. Uh, what's on TV today? <gasps> Everybody loves Raymond. How do I turn this off? He just, he sure doesn't look like a cop. Um, take another one if you would. Thank you, that was very helpful. Combine. And we get seven free shots because the custom shotgun actually has a capacity increase. You really need to get off Frank and Castle, man. I keep telling you about that. I think, really, um, as far as superheroes go, your the best idea is more than anything to have like maybe one or two superheroes you actually like. And even then, like, following mainstream comic books is one of the most ridiculous things these days. So what I tend to do is, um, really just follow particular cartoon series and some of the movies. Come on, let's go. You know what? Um, I'm feeling a little bit uncomfortable right now, so I'm going to get a... Um, I'll just grab a couple of these, just to make myself feel better. Yeah, because um, Super Hero cartoons, there have been some really good Super Hero cartoons over the years. I mean, of course, there's the Batman animated series and everything that came out of that. Superman animated series, which is like the best incarnation of Superman. Uh, the Batman Beyond series, the Justice League series, Static Shock, it's all great stuff. Uh, the the original Teen Titans series is excellent. Um, the Spider-Man animated series is really good. The X-Men animated series is really good. Um... If you want something a little weirder, Freakazoid was actually a really fun superhero series. So I'd say it's well worth going out of your way to watch Freakazoid. Ada! I'm sure she's fine. Can you hear me? Come on, snap out of it! Uh, the Spectacular Spider-Man was actually a really good series. Uh, Avengers Earth Mightiest Heroes is probably like the best cartoon Marvel has ever done. That ran for two seasons. Uh, it was kind of a shame that ended. Because uh, I don't think it was actually uh, doing that well. But it was a really good cartoon. Never actually watched the Nightiest Hulk series. I know what you're talking about, but I've never actually seen it. And there's a Fantastic Four series from the 90s that's in a very similar vein. And there was a Fantastic Four series in the like mid two thousands as well. Uh, 
And beyond that, some of the lesser known stuff, there's the Batman cartoon uh, from the mid 2000s, which is actually pretty good. Um, Wolverine and the X-Men was pretty good. I do quite like um, X-Men Evolution. Oh, crap. I do quite like X-Men Evolution. That was a pretty good cartoon. Really wish you wouldn't jump like that, Birkin. Oh. Still fine. Okay. And uh, when he does that, do not let him get close, because uh, he'll do a massive combo on you like that, and it's really painful. Reload. Awesome. All right, Alan, let's go. Uh, Wolverine and the X-Men was a pretty good cartoon. Um, Batman the Brave and the Bold, I cannot give that enough praise. That was such a good series. It was very wacky and light-hearted, but at no point was it ever a bad series. And when it needed to be serious, it could be. Welcome back. Um, like the episode in season one, Chill of the Night, where Batman finds Joe Chill, the man who killed his parents, and the Phantom Stranger and the Spectre behind the scenes are having a wager on whether Batman will truly become an embodiment of vengeance or whether he will stay as an avatar of justice. Save yourself. Is it just me, or does everybody always ignore what I say? Uh, I'm not I sure which one you're thinking of with the hand drawn. No, the hand drawn one's probably the original 90s animated series I before the revamp. Stay with me. It has I a very pastel look to it. For a short period of time, but I really enjoy being with you. But no, Brave and the Bold is a very colourful, but it's a very clean, very clean animation. I'm not capable of caring about anyone, but I don't want to lose you. Uh, the animated series in the 90s, um, one thing you can say of the Spider-Man, the Batman, uh, the inside DC Animated Universe, the X-Men series as well, uh, one thing you can say about all of those is, while they were meant for kids, um, they handled their storylines really well, especially the DC Animated Universe. Uh, there's, one, there's one episode in the first season of the Batman animated series, uh, Batman in My Basement, which is very much the weakest episode of the entire series. Uh, where Batman is recovering from a bad fight with the Penguin. And uh, essentially, a bunch of kids become the main characters for the episode, and it's really bad, and the writers... Uh, have gone on record stating that it was their least favourite episode to do, but the studio was demanding it. Uh, but beyond that, although it was a kid series, at no point did it ever treat the audience like idiots. Uh, and it was always maturely written. Because you can have these maturely written storylines that are fine for kids, but um, intelligent enough for basically everybody. It's one of those things like a cartoon that can be for both kids and adults because it's just done well. Um, a good example of that that comes to mind is uh, Avatar The Last Airbender. That was a really good series uh, for that. And I still hold up Avatar The Last Airbender as like the best cartoon I've ever seen. I am actually uh, probably overdue at this point to re-watch the an DC Animated Universe. So I do really like, like I say, it's like the best rendition of Superman. And when Superman's done right, Superman is like my favourite DC hero. Or just like my favourite superhero. The problem is, he's done right so rarely. Uh, it's really kind of a shame. Fairly Odd Parents went on for too long, was the biggest problem with that. 
Uh, let's see, make sure I can get around this. So I want to try and get this in one go. Awesome. Okay. God damn it. You gotta be kidding me, I actually got through that somehow. I never get that on my first try and I hate it. It's like uh, every now and then I'll walk into the living room and Nickelodeon will be on and <clears throat> if it's not Spongebob it's Fairly Odd Parents and at this point I don't even recognise most of Fairly Odd Parents. They both did. Awesome. Like, they added uh, a baby for the Fairly Odd for Wanda and Cosmo. Um, and then they added another godchild for them, who had to share, who Timmy had to share the... share Wanda and Cosmo with, and... Like, he should have ended way before then. You could tell they were just stuck for ideas. All right, let's try this again. And I can tell you, like, just straight off, uh, even if I got to the point where I will remember everything without completely forgetting something, uh, this box will be the reason why I do not speedrun RE2. Because goddamn this box. this, let's get out and make sure I can get around the side. Alright, I can but I need to push it out further. Alright. Yeah, Cartoon Network had a solid set of cartoons in the 90s. Dexter's Labs, of course, classic. Cow and Chicken. Uh, Powerpuff Girls is awesome. Like, when you look at so many of the, um... Uh, I don't want the same thing to happen again. When you look at so many of the, uh, the actual superheroes, the recognisable superheroes, uh, from the superhero cartoons from the 90s, and all the mandates they had, on stuff like the violence level and everything. And then there's Powerpuff Girls, which just had teeth flying everywhere. It's crazy how violent that series was. Samurai Jack, I actually re-watched Samurai Jack recently. Um, not all of it. Um, but I was re-watching Samurai Jack recently. And one thing that really stood out to me was, like, they get away with a lot of the violence in that series because... Oh, they're robots. But there is, like, there's one scene in the first season in particular that sticks out in my head where um, uh, Jack fights an enemy, straight up cuts him in half, and it's only after he's cut him in half and then it explodes that you find out it was a robot and not a person, which was crazy. was never actually into Ren and Stimpy. Um, the only Nickelodeon cartoons in the 90s I ever really saw much of were uh, Rugrats and the Wild Thornberrys. Thank <laughs> you. 
Alright. No, I've not actually seen season 5 yet. It is on my backlog, but I watch TV so rarely these days. Um, and actually getting a way to watch it. Uh, is a bit of a pain at the minute. I feel like there was another Nickelodeon cartoon I saw in the 90s and I cannot remember what it was. Like I said, it was mostly um, Rugrats and the Wild Thornberrys, but I feel like there was another one. At some point, I need to sit down and watch, like, actually properly watch The Amazing World of Gumball. Because I've seen so much good stuff about that. And every now and then I'll see a clip of it and it looks so funny. And like, it'll actually appeal to me. Hey Arnold, that'll definitely be the one I'm thinking of. So I did see a bunch of Hey Arnold when I was a kid. Pretty sure Hey Arnold. Yeah, Hey Arnold is Nickelodeon, because I'm thinking of the, um... There was a recent game, Nickelodeon Kart Racer, that had uh, Arnold and Helga as characters you could play as. And that Kart Racer, I've not actually played it myself. I saw a one-off Let's Play of it from a channel I actually quite like watching. Um, and the roster in that was so weird. It's like they had um, they had all four of the Ninja Turtles, but it was the re the most recent incarnation of the Ninja Turtles that they've got on Nickelodeon at the minute. Uh, there was that. There were a few Rugrats characters. There was Hey Arnold characters. Uh, it was really weird because uh, I think there was only SpongeBob to represent uh, SpongeBob. God damn it! I think there was only Spongebob to represent uh, the Spongebob series, like there was no Patrick, there was no Sandy, there was no Squidward. <laughs> Knew I kept you for a reason. Uh, I am aware of real monsters, it's not something that I ever actually watch properly. Uh, make sure we grab this. And we climb through here. There you go, Keenan and Kel, yeah, I forget that was Nickelodeon, but I saw a lot of that as a kid. So that was one of my favourite uh, sitcoms as a kid. Because as a kid, um, as a kid, I hated a lot of the live action stuff. I'd always be like, you know, cartoons, put cartoons on. So CBBC was terrible with that. It'd be like, oh yeah, no, watch cartoon, like, watch, watch Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo, love Scooby-Doo. And then it'll put on some weird live-action show they've imported from Australia. And it's like, you know, I'm not here for this, I was here for the cartoons. But Keenan and Kel is like, one of the few kids shows that I watched that I actually really enjoyed that was live-action. Uh, we can't actually get poisoned here. That said, what we want to do, because uh, the plants are more of a pain with Leon, is leave and just re-enter and the positions reset like they did in Scenario Way. Uh, the plants will only poison you if you use the BOW gas in Scenario A. Then there'll be diff a different variation and they'll be slightly red. Uh, they'll be more red than that. And then they can poison you. I want to take you down and grab this herb. And let's go down the ladder. Yeah. Um, that multi part episode, uh, the horror one with the headless knight, was that the finale of Keenan and Kel? Because that's the that's the episode. Those are the episodes I remember most. Ugh. 
God damn it. Just would not come around the corner and behave. Ugh. Awkward liquors. Yeah, Keenan and Kel was awesome. So, um, I'm not sure what Kel does now, uh, but Keenan is actually a regular cast member on Saturday Night Live. Let's drop some of this off. Uh, drop you off. Let's keep this party rolling. Just forgot something, I'll be back in a moment. Uh, there's actually a lot of herbs around in Resident Evil 2. Um, you know what, at this point we can just straight up drop the shotgun and make the magnum the main weapon. We've got the ammo for it. You know what? I didn't even grab what I went back for. God damn it. A weapon box key. Yeah, there's actually a lot of herbs around in Resident Evil 2. Um, and if you don't get lost, you'll actually just see them all uh, very close to the round. And you just be able to grab them all at once. You know what, it's probably worth grabbing that shotgun back for the moth, actually, so I don't have to waste the magnum on it. No, I think there's actually like three red herbs in the game. And we have the custom magnum parts. So that's six free shots with the magnum. So what I'd usually do is grab, uh, I'd take out all the zombies in here uh, with the magnum just to use up those shots. Uh, but what I want to do is actually, mm, I very nearly swerved into that guy. What I want to do is save a few of these shots for the moth so I don't have to go back for the shotgun. You need to get over that knife, it ain't coming back out of the box. Now let's use that lab card. through all of those. That's a shame. I was hoping I wouldn't have to do that. It's a big moth. That's why we don't use the knife on it. It's too big. That said, not the worst moth in the series. That will always go to the moths in Code Veronica. In that one corridor in Antarctica. Hate that. But you know, uh, just for a little bit actually. I'm going to grab the shotgun back out. Because uh, there's a few zombies I want to take out uh, in a room upstairs and I'd rather not waste the magnum on them. They actually did a two live action series of the twi of the tick. Um, I've not seen uh, the newest one, and I haven't actually seen the cartoon. Uh, 
uh, that you're talking about, but I did see the first live action series of The Tick. Uh, that had Patrick Warburton as The Tick, and I actually really enjoyed that. I thought it was really funny. But they only did one season, which was a big shame. Uh, but I've not actually seen the new one, uh, the one that has Peter Serafinovich as the tick. I've not seen that. But yeah, uh, the shotgun is certainly more reliable than the Magnum for taking down the liquors. Uh, and we are going to be running into a couple more liquors, actually, uh, that I want to deal with like this. Uh, how many liquors we got left? I think there's just one liquor left. Uh, if you talk about the new one, uh, I think it's exclusive to Amazon Prime. I'm pretty sure they did do a second season of that. <laughs> Okay, and uh, just pop in here for a moment. At this point, this is actually completely optional. Uh, pop in here for a bit of ammo, actually. You know what? No, don't pop in here for ammo. I forgot plants were in here in Leon B. I thought it'd be zombies again, I don't want to deal with the plants. And we do the second fingerprint. We get access to this scenario B exclusive room if you did both fingerprints with two liquors in. That guy just kept spamming that. That was nasty. Honestly, I can never do this room well. Is there another liquor? Oh, there's three liquors. Hit the liquor. Jeez. But yeah, I never managed to do this room well. Um, you can get the submachine gun here if you didn't pick it up in the armory. Um, if you did pick it up in the armor, you actually get a, uh, a clip for the submachine gun. And this is all that's here. Honestly, it's not worth all the trouble you have to go through to get it. And, like, dealing with the liquors. It's like the worst room in the game for liquors. Uh, so that's done, let's go and finish this area off and get towards the end of the game. You know, now I'm thinking I should have got the Magnum. But it's all good. Shotgun's good enough for this next bit coming up. Is it? Huh. I mean, all the area you fight the Proto-Terran in Zero is uh, from this. Is this, actually, uh, where the tram elevator is, which was a stupid idea. Yeah. I didn't realise that that one room uh, you need the fingerprint verification for was husband. actually supposed to be where it came from. I know from. what you're looking for. You came for the G-Virus, didn't you? From me. So Annette is now going around accusing everybody of killing her husband. Now, where's that spy you were working with earlier? 
You know who I'm talking about. What? You really don't know anything, do you? <laughs> You're so gullible. She's one of the operatives sent here by the agency. The only reason why she came here is to obtain the G-Virus. G-Virus. That's a lie. No, it's the truth. I discovered this when I did a background check on her. She specifically got close to John and became... I discovered when I did a background check on her. It was foolish of her to give me her real name. That can't be. I know her. Ada wouldn't do something like that. If you don't want to believe it, I don't really care. You're about to die anyway. That's what you think. Come on. There we go. Yeah, usually I have the Magnum for this, but because I wanted to go in that room with the liquors, like, nah, I didn't bring the, ma didn't bring the Magnum because, honestly, the shotgun's probably better for the liquors. And I wasn't going all the way back to that safe room. Uh, so at this point, worth noting, Mr. X has been no threat at all. Uh, you can rest assured that in this run, Mr. X definitely did not give it to me. So that key exists only to open this room. It's the... The stupid thing with the lab for Leon B, um, you get in, you turn the power on to get into the elevator so you can go down to the bottom to get that key just so you can go into this room back up here, just so that this cutscene can happen. Run! And it's just a bunch of busy work more than anything. threw her so hard against that background that she actually broke the pre-rendered background. I know now why you cry, but it is something I can never do. L Leon, please, escape. No. I know the uh, I know the prototype was awaiting disposal. Uh, I didn't realise it was supposed to be that room he came from. But even then, it doesn't actually justify the trouble it, co it takes to get into that room in this game. And especially since you can't get to that room in Zero. Uh. Ada... No. Ada! Come! The self destruct sequence has been activated. Repeat. The self destruct sequence has been activated. The sequence may not be aborted. All employees proceed to the top of the platform at the bottom platform. I've not been drinking, I swear. Always remember you. Goodbye. I'll see you again in Resident Evil 4. Don't want to quit my shotgun. But yeah, the whole bit with Mr. X really comes across as dis, um, disingenuous. Comes across as kind of stupid when um, it's entirely possible by this point to get here and with the enhanced magnum it's four shots to take Mr. X down. So it's like, oh no, Mr. X, and he's cornered me. But it's like four shots. Claire, is that you? Where are you? Oh, 
monitor. But never mind that right now. Leon, you have to go back and get Sherry for me. I left her in the security office. Please, you must save her. Claire, Please, where are you? What are you gonna do? I'm in the hospital. Where are you going? Okay. What is it? It's a big building full of patients, but that's not important right now. I'm counting on you. Hello? Claire, are you there? Claire! Alright, time to book it. Security office? Let's go. The fedora did kind of make sense. Um, it was considered for this game. You can find it in the concept art. Uh, I think in the Dreamcast version. Because uh, the Dreamcast version does actually have a concept art gallery, which is really neat. Uh, that's exclusive to that version. But... Um, it does, it does make sense uh, with the idea that Mr. X was supposed to um, blend in somewhat. Although that said, you know, the, the remake, more than anything, kind of emphasises the dead eyes, which are like one of the big standout features, even with the messed up face. Like, you could look at his face and think, oh jeez, that guy's probably been through some horrible stuff. Horrible stuff. But then you see the eyes, and it's like, oh, those eyes are dead. Sherry? It's a good idea that they don't show me the, or the rest of the office, because I know there's going to be shotgun ammo here that I can't get. Of course, that said, we are just straight up switching to the Magnum. Now. Use the master key. Open the secret emergency room. This elevator will move sideways. See, the beige coat I thought was a decent idea uh, for Ada. I thought the sunglasses were incredibly stupid. It's like, okay, um... Trench coat? Fine, fair enough. It's raining, wearing a coat is a good idea when you have the dress on underneath. The sunglasses at night really make you look suspicious. But you know, nobody listened to me when I said that. Just rest here, Ethan. Claire should be back soon. Alright, uh, we've got a couple of things we want to do. And we're going to head towards the end of the game. We're going to head to the item box in the back. Uh, so we put this away, get the magnum, uh, press the wrong button, grab the key just to make sure I remember it. Uh, open the chest again. Uh, magnum ammo, get rid of that. Uh, let's see, I want you, I want you, 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 uh, you. Uh, let's mix some up. Just in case. I mean, to be fair, like, this ending scenario is less uh, worrisome than scenario A, uh, but just in case. How many more herbs do we have? Yes, we can just do like a load of uh, full greens. Okay. Well, I see. I want to put a red and green here, red and green here. 
Grab the platform key, definitely. Grab you. Use you. And then uh, grab one more. And then make sure we equip the Magnum. Let's go. I don't think I've actually picked up all the herbs. Um, I forget if I actually grabbed those ones uh, at the side stairway in the police station. Alright, let's get this party started. And by that, I mean let's end this party. And now we have the timer. So, uh, no more screwing around. Serious face. Hmm. Don't forget the spark plugs. Mm. So these spark plugs, more than anything, um, pretty much entirely exist just so you will have two empty slots uh, when you face the next boss. I'm sure that was nothing. So uh, let's use the spark plugs. And then we have two spaces free. You seem to be missing a butt cheek, sir. So, uh, pro tip. Uh, dodge to the left immediately. Because when he runs at you like that, he always uses the left claw. Here. Use this. So this is exactly why we use uh, the spark plugs and free up two slots so that we make sure we can actually use uh, pick up and you know what let's use one just to be safe uh, pick up and use the rocket launcher excuse me excuse me come over here come on so rude so rude today We're not going to be friends after this. Uh, this isn't Birkin, this is Mr. X. Need to get that rocket launcher up. Game over. Honestly, that's like the most trouble I've had with that guy in so long. Also, if you were playing the remake and when you shot the, the tyrant with the rocket launcher at the end, if you didn't say game over, uh, we can't be friends anymore. Well, let's get out of it. Yeah, that was like the worst I've done on that guy in a long time. I was at like three, three healing, two healing items, three healing, three healing items. That was, ugh. yeah, I heard about that. Um, isn't that like the the two hits with the rocket launcher on hardcore? Isn't that why the rocket launcher? in the remake is actually one of the uh, four shots like in uh, Resident Evil 1. You know what, I need you to auto-aim here. 
Okay, and make sure we open the gate. Now let's get out of here. To be fair, I think um, the better, what would have been a cooler idea in the remake is um, on hardcore. If rather than uh, making it take two rocket hits to kill him, which feels like it's just a difficulty thing, it's like, oh yeah, no, you're playing on hard difficulty. It'll take more to kill him this time. I think it would have been cool if he is programmed to for the first rocket you shoot at him, bat it away like the Tyrant does in remake. I think that would have been cooler, but then the second one's actually going to hit. So, we did it. We've made it out of Raccoon City. Isn't everybody so happy? Sherry's unconscious. But can we save Sherry? I have the antidote. If you saw a scenario where you know the answer is yes. Blair, what's happening? Not now. Come on, Sherry, wake up. Wake up. Please wake up. Go on, Sherry. Go on, Sherry. Claire? Where am I? It worked! Oh, Sherry. You're gonna be okay. Thanks, Claire. <sighs> no. I have to find my brother. It's finally over. This is just the beginning. Let's go home. Let's stop by Wendy's on the way home. Goodbye. What's this? This wasn't in scenario way. I'm just going to equip the rocket launcher. Don't think too much about that. What's going on? What was that? Do you do you want to check it out, Claire? No. Okay. Guess I'll do it then. Warning. Biohazardous outbreak imminent. The emergency system has been activated. This train will detonate. Repeat, this train will detonate. Okay, so there's an automatic biohazard detection system on the train. What's wrong? Uh, not a bad idea, honestly, uh, considering. The fact that it locks all the doors is probably also not a bad idea. The fact that it just decides to blow the train up is kind of stupid. What they should do is immediately hit the brakes and then blow the train up. It's like, oh yeah, no, biohazard detected. Train's gonna blow up in two minutes. Okay. Um, what can happen in two minutes? So, uh, this is Birkin's final form. Uh, he is a big gaping asshole. In fact, so uh, what we're going to do is calmly and carefully, uh, we're going to back up. Just going to calmly and carefully back up and unload. Unload everything. Calmly and carefully. Straight into the asshole. There you go. I don't think the brakes uh, necessarily give it time to get out when you consider they've locked all the doors. Except this door. Which is probably more about uh, the convenience than anything. 
Uh, like this, this door isn't locked for some reason, but that's probably more about convenience than anything. Yes, you are totally right about that, Bane. G5 is literally an asshole. Don't put your dick in it. Warning. Warning. The self-destruct system has been activated. Each train Can it eat through metal, or is it more that it just kind of pushes its way through metal? I just pushes its way through and forces itself. Like that. That looks less like it's eating its way through, more like it's just pushing until it kind of just bursts through. See, so like that, pretty much. Because at this point, I think it's just like an expanding biomass. It can get through the train walls, but I don't think the train stopping is really going to make any difference to that. And when you consider it's supposed to be like any kind of biohazardous outbreak, like if the T-Virus got out through here, now your zombies ain't going to be able to get through that, through locked doors like that. Hmm. Which one's the right switch? Maybe this one? Press the one that says stop. I hope this sudden breaking doesn't lodge Claire loose from the bottom of the train and cause her to fall off and become heavily injured and possibly fall under the wheels. Are you all right? I'm okay. Where's Claire? Claire? Claire! Right here. Claire! I guess we all made it. Well, we've seen at this point that um, all the damage we've thrown at G isn't stopping it. I think falling off the train at speed isn't going to stop it. I mean, in the end, this explosion taking care of it is probably more, you know, the game's over now. The game's over now, let's just say the, the explosion dealt it. The, the explosion finished it, that's fine. The game's it's over. finally over. Sherry, you look terrible. No worse than you, Claire. <sighs> what a happy ending. Now? What's wrong? Is something following us? We have to go. We don't have any time to waste. Go? Where? To Rockford Island. It's up to us to take out Umbrella. I'll stop now. So that was scenario B of Resident Evil 2. Uh, Leon B. Uh, I think uh, if we do, well, I say if. Uh, let's imagine we never stop streaming. Uh, we will be eventually back around to Resident Evil 2 again. Uh, we'll be doing a different version. Um, either the Dreamcast or the GameCube. Uh, if I can work out the. Uh, the output for the N64 will do that because like outputting the 64 to record looks awful honestly and it keeps leaving a buzzing noise through the capture card which I need to deal with somehow. Yeah. Now, the stock market takes care of Umbrella after Jill and Chris raid their secret Siberian base. and after Wesker testifies in court. It wasn't just the stock market, it was that secret raid on the secret Russian base and Wesker testifying in court. So yeah, that was a Resident Evil 2 scenario B, Leon B. Um, had a few issues with that. Uh, took a lot more damage than, I'd, than I would have liked. Um, but we didn't forget anything major like in Claire A, thankfully. So it went smoother. Went, definitely went smoother. Mm. 
Nobody remembers Yoko. It's like you say you say don't forget Yoko because she gave evidence. Everybody forgot Yoko. Just like everybody forgot Alyssa uh Alyssa Ashcroft until uh, RE7. Everybody forgot. So let's see what our end results are, shall we? Oh, came up to almost two and a half hours. Yeah. Uh, we still got an A rank, no saves in there. I know I said I was probably going to save in the lab, but by the time we got round to it, I was just focused on the end goal at that point. Uh, so that was actually not the best run, but it was a decent enough run. Um, with those two, actually, we now have all the special weapons. Uh, the infinite ammo rocket launch, the infinite ammo submachine gun, and the infinite ammo gatling gun. So we have all of those. And uh, we've also unlocked the hunk, um, the four scenario, the four survivor scenario. Just gonna put this here. Remember, you can play a new scenario if you make a new save data. And we're going to save again. So this doesn't actually exist in the original version. Uh, I think this was actually first introduced in the DualShock version, the extreme battle mode, the extreme battle game mode. Uh, which is kind of like, it's not the earliest incarnation of the idea that would eventually become mercenaries. I think that the earliest incarnation of that would be uh, the bonus game in the Saturn version of Resident Evil 1. And Hunk, the fourth survivor. Alright, so that was Resident Evil 2, uh, scenario B, Leon B. Uh, so that went fairly well, uh, all things considered. Uh, the time was a little high, I wasn't overly happy about that. Uh, but we still got the A rank, it was still a, still a solid enough run. Um, 